Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and we have some significant app updates to talk about. Apple released some, some third parties updated theirs, so I thought we'd talk about the latest or major significant app updates from Apple and others on iOS and iPadOS. Now the first thing is, over this past week, we had a bunch of issues with Apple's weather app. Now the widget itself sometimes was blank, and sometimes if we went into the app itself, it was extremely slow to load. Now it seems to be fixed, and with Apple's recent update of iOS 16.4.1, it definitely seems to be better. However, they didn't mention at all that they fixed the issue. Also on their status page where they have their system status of all their different services, it seems to be up and running. It went up, then went back down, and then they fixed it again. And so it's been problematic, but I think it's resolved at this point. Now, if you're not using Apple's weather app, let me know what you're using in the comments below. Apple Maps had some redesigned maps expand to different areas this time around, and starting today, or at least at the time of filming this video, it's now rolling out to Austria, Croatia, Czechia, Hungary, Poland, and Slovenia. So if we zoom in here to Vienna, you can see here as I get closer and then use two fingers tilt we have 3D maps. We'll have significant map updates here with different landmarks and more. So if you're seeing that, let me know in the comments below. But Apple continues to roll these out almost weekly at this point where they're updating different locations with these new maps. So it's really great. Hopefully they'll get all of the cities done fairly soon. Swift Playgrounds got an update and that's a way you can actually program right on your device or actually learn how to program Swift Playgrounds here. As you can see, had an update where it says Swift Playgrounds 4.3 includes Swift 5.8, the iOS 16.4 SDK, along with other features and bug fixes. Soundpad shows you how to build your own digital music instrument, and they've also added support for Norwegian and Vietnamese language. So those have been updated as of four days ago at this point, and you'll want to make sure that your app's updated, and then you'll have access to those 16.4 SDKs if you want to use those. So that's been updated. That's pretty significant as far as this goes, but also Apple updated their iWork suite of apps. That includes Pages, Keynote, and Numbers. Basically Word, PowerPoint, and Excel, but they're free on iPad. And as long as you don't have to do anything major with them, I actually prefer them, especially Keynote for actually making different presentations, I think is much better than PowerPoint. So if we go into Pages, You'll see here, I was testing this out, but we have tilt and azimuth support with hover. So if we're using hover, we can hover our pencil over the top and depending on the angle the pencil is at, it actually has a longer or shorter line here. So as I tilt it up, it becomes a dot. As I tilt down, it's a line. And then of course you can shade like that. And so that's been updated along with other bug fixes and improvements. So if you're using those apps, make sure that you update them if you haven't already. Now, a recent app that Apple released was Apple Music Classical, and I wanted to ask if this is something you've actually been using. I'm not personally someone that listens to classical music regularly, although once in a while is nice, and I'm curious what you think as far as whether or not Apple could have just included this into the music app, or maybe you're a Prime Phonics subscriber and you were really looking forward to a classical music app. I'm curious what you think of it, and if you've been using it, is it great? Could they fix some things? Let me know in the comments below. Now there's a new app or an, an app that's been updated with some new features and that's Home Widget. Home Widget allows you to control your different home devices through widgets. You can see that here. If I go over to my widgets here, it says office desk. And then if maybe I use the LifeX light strip, you'll see it activates and in the background, my lights will turn on. You can turn them back off. You have a nice animation and this has some new options as well as customizations. So if we go into the app itself, you can go premium, but I'm using it free at this point. If we go to here and then edit our panel, we can change the background color. We can change different shades and more, change the transparency, the overall blur and more. You can also change the different things you have set up within those widgets. So if maybe we go to the name, of course, you can change that. You can toggle different actions here with a five second delay, a confirmation. There's some really nice features they've updated and it's only been updated for a couple days. So definitely try this out if you want to control your home and just go directly through a widget. It's great. It's 
pretty comprehensive and adds all of your devices there, as you can see here. So it's really nice that it's just easy access. If you're a T-Mobile user, there's a great update if you use MLB in that they're going to allow free access to it until 2028. You can see all of the different news stories about it here, where T-Mobile will provide free MLB.TV to customers through 2028. So that's great. They also gave away with T-Mobile Tuesdays and MLS subscription and Apple TV. So maybe it will transfer there. You can watch all of your games and more. So it's a great little perk if you're using T-Mobile like I am. Now, if you're someone that uses Twitter, but you don't use the Twitter app and was, were using third-party apps, many of them stopped working, but now the free API has completely been turned off. So remaining third-party apps can no longer access data to that. I don't think that's necessarily a great thing. I know a lot of people liked the third-party apps. Maybe they'll come up with something else in the future, but right now those have been turned off. So you pretty much have to use the stock Twitter app. I've used that for years and don't really mind it, but a lot of people really prefer other ones. Now, Spotify, if you use that regularly, they're actually shutting down a feature, which is similar to Clubhouse. It's an area where people can just sort of jump in a chat like you can on Twitter, and it's called Green Room. They're turning that off in Spotify. One other thing I wanted to mention about Spotify is they haven't mentioned HomePod support, but they say that AirPlay 2 support is actually coming soon. So that's something they've strangely sort of abandoned at this point, but now they'll allow you to use AirPlay 2 very soon. They haven't given a date on that yet, though. So let me know if you use Spotify, if you prefer it, what you use it on. Maybe you don't have an iPhone, you use it maybe on an iPad and then an Android phone. That seems to be one of the best use cases, or maybe you just get a discount through family or more. But either way, let me know if you prefer Spotify or Apple Music. Now, WhatsApp actually is getting some updates here very soon. So if you use WhatsApp, they're getting new design updates in the latest beta. So that's for parts of the app. And the latest beta also has an option to share your status updates to Facebook stories without leaving the WhatsApp app. So because Facebook owns WhatsApp, you'll be able to share between those. I don't know that many users will want that or trust that as most people want to use end-to-end -end encrypted and not let Facebook know what you're doing. But either way, you'll be able to do that soon, according to W a beta info that has the latest betas of WhatsApp. Also, speaking of Facebook, if you're in the European Union, you'll soon be allowed to opt out of tracking in the EU. So nowhere else so far, but if you are using the Facebook app or Facebook in general, you can opt out of that very soon and only ads will be targeted based on general information, such as your age and general location, instead of being specific to what you're actually doing on your phone, things you might say or, or do while you're using the app. So either way, those should be able to be opted out of. Hopefully they bring that maybe to the United States and elsewhere. One other thing I wanted to mention is it seems we're getting closer and closer to TikTok being banned in the United States. It seems to be banned across many different government devices all around the world, as well as different universities now as well. So that seems to be happening more and more. And it's one of the few things that basically our government agrees on across different parties. So maybe we'll see that, maybe we won't, but it still remains very popular. But I wanted to hear what you think about that in the comments below. But please keep the comments civil as it is a bit of a charged topic, but I'd love to hear what you have to say. If you use the Hulu app on your Apple TV, they've updated it with an all new sidebar navigation that should make it a little bit easier. Hopefully it's not as annoying as Amazon's update where it sort of just has giant DVD boxes that get in the way but they have updated it on Apple TV. Now, as far as additional updates, that's the major ones for this past couple of weeks. As there's more updates, of course, I'll continue to give you updates on that. There's still some on the Mac with Pixelmator Pro, the Craft app that I use and others, but they're not huge at this point. Most of them are small bug fixes. There were some big ones not too long ago with Pixelmator Pro though. Now we had that iOS 16.4.1 release and it takes a few days to know if battery is improved, if there's additional bugs and more to sort of analyze that and see what it's like overall. So that will take a few days. Of course, we've been using iOS 16.5 beta one for a couple of weeks and maybe we'll talk about that more in depth as we've had more and more feedback about it but we can expect iOS 16.5 beta two on Tuesday or Wednesday. Usually since we've had beta one for almost two weeks, by Tuesday we should have beta two typically. Apple of course could change this, but that's normally what happens and then we'll get 
faster betas every week or so until the final release, which is expected probably around May at this point. Of course, we'll have WWDC in June with iOS 17 beta one as well. And I'm looking most forward to that with some new changes there that are significant. So of course we'll talk about that. We'll have the normal news update on Monday and let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to cover, whether that be in the weekly news updates that I've done for quite a long time or something different. Let me know in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.